the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad that we are transformed in Christ and share the hope of eternal life. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I feel like we might capsize a little bit this morning. A little, a little unequally balanced. That's okay. We're, we are God's people. We're gathered together in God's house to receive God's gifts. Uh, what a joy it is to be able uh, to do that. Very warm welcome to any visitors and guests who are with us, uh, either worshiping here in person or those who are uh, joining in attendance online. Uh, we're glad to have you here. I know you're always welcome to join us uh, at Holy Cross. Uh, just a few words. Uh, no, we're not going to have announcements. I still, it's still out of old habit. Keep, keep trying to do that. But no, we're going to just uh, stand uh, and greet each other with the peace of our Lord. Christ. 
crucified cut to the heart of those who heard Peter's sermon. They knew they were guilty and that it was their sins that Christ paid the punishment for. We too are cut to the heart when we realize the seriousness of our sins and the consequences they deserve. What shall we do? We shall turn to our Lord once again, confessing our sins and receiving his forgiveness.
until that day we see him face to face, and you see the image of your Son in us. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our readings. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings, and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day, day by day, those who were being saved. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay, to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our world flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In anticipation of the Holy Gospel, please stand as we speak together the Alleluia in verse. Alleluia, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the second chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, Look, why, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and was hungry, he and those who were with him? How he entered the house of God at the time of Abiathar, the high priest, ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. And our children's message and object lesson this day will be during the sermon. Uh, so we continue with our sermon hymn number 853, How Clear Is Our Vocation.
Brothers, what shall we do? So far the word of the Lord. Your friends in Christ, back when I was in college, we were required uh, to take a, at least one fine arts class. Uh, now, if I had known uh, that I would have been joining choir uh, during my second year of college, I probably wouldn't have taken this. Uh, but looking back, uh, I am glad I did. Uh, you see, me and my buddy Aaron, uh, to fulfill all our fine arts credit, signed up for a three hours, once a week, Monday night class uh, that focused on ceramics. And throughout the course, we had to make a, a number of, of different pieces. Uh, one of them uh, was, was this, <laughs> this base uh, that I made. Um, now before we uh, finish, finish it up, where it was all dry, and if you were getting it glazed and everything, or where I was getting it glazed, um, my, uh, I, I received a couple comments on this. Uh, and my ceramic teacher came over and she's like, oh wow, this, this really kind of looks like, like, like a torso. Uh, okay, well, that's not really what I was going for, but okay. And then my buddy Aaron chimed in, and he said, I think it looks like the Pillsbury Doughboy. Like, Thanks, Aaron. Thank you very much. Now, one of the realities of ceramics uh, is that, you know, however beautiful your cup or jar is, or perhaps maybe not so uh, beautiful, um, you know, you, you, you can have this happen where, of course, it, it breaks. Now, what do you do when it breaks? Uh, do you simply throw it away? Um, I think a lot of us uh, are inclined to do so, especially if it's a piece we, we didn't really like or it wasn't very special. But what if it was a piece that you had inherited from your grandmother? Or it was something that really was special that you had put a lot of time and energy into? And you're, you're kind of sad that this piece broke. What do you do? Well, for that, our friends from Japan have a solution. Uh, you see that there's this Japanese art form called Kintsugi. Have any of you ever heard of Kintsugi by a show of hands? Oh, I see. Okay, I mean, you've heard of that before. Um, and, and so what it is, it's this interesting uh, treatment of a broken part pottery where basically you, well, for one, you, you glue it back together, but you don't glue it back together in just kind of this oh-so-perfect way, but rather you do so in such a way where it's, uh, you actually use lacquer with like gold powder mixed in. And so what happens is, is you see the cracks uh, that are really kind of accentuated by this, this golden lacquer that puts uh, the piece of broken pottery back together. So when it's all dry and put back together, the cracks aren't hidden like maybe we would try to do, but rather they accentu they're accentuated. Uh, as the golden lacquer shows where those cracks uh, are. Uh, you can see a picture of this here, uh, of a nicely done piece of kintsugi uh, on our bulletin cover this morning. You see, this is, the, this is a different viewpoint maybe than, than what we would normally take, whereas we might ordinarily try to glue something back together uh, so that you can't see the cracks, right? Or at least so that they're hidden a little bit more Kintsugi treats breakage and repair as part of the history of that object, rather than something that needs to be disguised. Now friends, uh, this morning uh, we've been listening to, to portions of, of Peter's sermon at, at Pentecost the last few weeks, and this week we, we hear the response of the people. We are told that they are that they're cut to the heart. They were cut to the heart. And I suppose that there is maybe a couple different ways you could look at what, look at what, how that would mean to, to us in our modern day. You might say that they were cut to the heart in the sense that they were really zealous uh, and really impassioned because of Peter's words. That they're really just so excited about what they heard that they're cut to the heart. That's one way you could look at it, but I don't know. I don't think that's really what's going on here. I think uh, rather than feeling zealous feeling broken. Rather than impassioned, they're feeling shattered, like a piece of broken pottery. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has used Peter's sermon here uh, as a word of law. It's 
to them. Not gospel. It's a word that confronts them and convicts them of this sobering fact. You heard it last week, verse 23 of, of this sermon. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. So they're feeling kind of bad about that. But then this is, this is actually worse, verse 24. God raised him up, losing the pains of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. Now we think of that as, as gospel, right? Jesus is raised up from the dead for the forgiveness of our sins, life and salvation. But they're hearing it as a word of law. Why? Because after all, if they killed Jesus, if they crucified Jesus, what is he going to do to them now that he's been raised from the dead? And so, yes, the Holy Spirit through Peter's sermon has broken and shattered them with God's law so that all they can say is, Brothers, what shall we do? Does Peter tell them, Eh, you're doomed. You're broken and shattered. We might as well just toss you aside in the garbage heap. Or on the flip side, does he try to kind of smooth things over a, a little bit and say, Well, you know, I was probably a little too harsh with them there. And say, You know, just, you guys, just forget what I said. Everything's fine. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Peter doesn't say either of those things. But rather, it's time for the kintsugi, which means golden repair. It's time for the golden repair to begin. What does he say? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I mean, talk about a different outcome uh, than what they were expecting in their cut to the heart moment, in their broken and shattered moment. Instead of receiving judgment, they receive grace. At a time where they feel broken and shattered because of what they had done, they're not tossed aside, but are put back together by a merciful God. And not them only. Uh, as Peter said, this promise is for you and for your children and for all those who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. You see, God's word works. The Holy Spirit works as those who receive Peter's word are baptized. They were added that day to their number around 3,000 souls. Whenever I hear that last part, I always think about the church I, I, I grew up at, in St. Paul, Lutheran, and Grafton, Wisconsin, and I think about it because that's about how many people were in our baptized membership, about 3,000 people. Uh, to think that there were that many people who all of a sudden believed and were baptized on this day uh, is absolutely astounding, and God be praised for those first days and for those first people who were brought to faith in our Lord Jesus at Pentecost. But friends, when these people were brought to faith in our Lord Jesus, did that all of a sudden just fix everything? Were they suddenly devoid of any problem or pains of sins or struggles in their life? Was everything always just kind of fine and dandy uh, for these new Christians? Were they always living the victorious Christian life? Or were they all the more, on the other side, were they all the more aware of their faults on a regular basis, just, just recognizing how broken and shattered uh, they are? I think there's a tendency for us to overemphasize one or the other, to emphasize either the broken part of the blessing or the blessed part of the brokenness. On one hand, for example, we talk about and we confess, as we did this morning, how we are poor miserable sinners who deserve nothing at all but God's punishment. Is it correct for us to talk that way? Yes, it is. But where it becomes a problem is when we say, oh, I'm no good. It's like we get into Eeyore mode. You remember Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh? Oh, bother. I can't do anything good. There's nothing that God can do with me. I'm broken beyond repair. Not going to help at all. God can't use me. No! <laughs> Or a different line of thought. Okay, I'm, I'm broken again. I sinned again. I screwed up again. So now I really need to pick up all the pieces. And I need to kind of glue them back.
back together and get it all just so perfectly so that nobody knows my faults or my struggles. Both of those get off on the wrong track and forget about the golden repair that Jesus brings. On the, the other hand, there are some who look at the Christian life uh, and, and overemphasize that blessing part, right? I think about Chris Traeger from the show Parks and Recreation, if any of you have seen that show before. And he's always just so happy and he's so enthusiastic and telling everybody how awesome they are. And so we might say, oh, I'm going to have my health and I'm going to have the wealth and I'll have the name and I'll have the fame because after all, I've got God's favor. So, so please don't trouble me with your problems your brokenness. I don't really want to have to deal with that with your shattered and broken reality because it's all good for me. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Well, there's a couple problems with that too, right? Jesus said in this world, you are going to have trouble uh, but to take heart for he's overcome the world. That last part is good news, but we dare not ever say uh, and get to a point where we just lose empathy and lose sympathy where there's uh, for those who are struggling with whatever it is that they're going that, that, that's going on in their lives. Now friends, the Apostle Paul puts it this way this morning. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay, referring to our, our bodies, to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. In other words, dear friends, we are not self-made. We don't say uh, we're broken uh, and not blessed, and we're blessed and no longer broken. Both of those are dishonest. We are broken and we are blessed. I, the other day, decided to order and try my hand at this. I ordered a, a, a Kintsugi kit to repair a mug that we had broken recently, that I had broken recently. It was getting the pool ready. It was a windy day. It blew off. It shattered into four or five pieces. But I tried my hand at it. It's not quite as beautiful uh, as the, what you see on the front cover, but it's that golden repair, putting an object back together uh, once more, in which we're reminded uh, that the, in the moments of brokenness, our Lord Jesus comes to us to do his golden repair, to take the shattered pieces of our lives upon himself, upon the cross, uh, and through baptism, join us back together in his life, in his death, in his resurrection, through his word flowing into us, and then flowing out of us, revealing his glory. We proclaim that he is Lord, and the light of Christ shines in our lives, even through those broken parts. And at this table here, Jesus who once and for all drank from the fractured cup of his Father's wrath, now gives himself to eat and to drink so that we who are fractured might be whole once more. Forgiven, freed, and loved, nothing could be more golden than that. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and lives in this Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. At this time, please stand as you are able as we confess our common Christian faith with the Lord and the Apostles. I believe in God, the Father of Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body,
well as uh, the garden lady who's going with them as they are tra actually traveling to Guatemala this week uh, to teach gardening and hat making uh, to the ladies there at a school in Guatemala. So we pray for safe travels for Sally uh, and, and for her friend and that they have an enjoyable time in Guatemala as they teach. Uh, are there any other prayer requests uh, this day before we go to our Lord in prayer? All right, well, friends in Christ, I urge you to join with me uh, in praying to our Lord as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, may your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend all those who we have listed in our prayer guide, including Nevea, who's having open heart surgery on June 5th, for Kelly as she recovers from her knee surgery, for Megan as she continues to undergo chemotherapy, for Bill with cancer, for Dustin as he recovers from his brain bleed, for Pastor Jim with his treatment for myeloma, with Mike for his chronic prostatitis and pelvic pain, for Sue, uh, for Kathy's sister with back problems, and for Race and Clarissa, Connie Schwentz's niece's children. Lord, we ask that you would be with all of these, as well as with Sally, uh, as she travels down to Guatemala, along with her friend, that you would give them safe travels. Lord, we commend these and for all who are in need, praying for them at all times. Thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us our daily bread, Preserve us from greed and selfish cares. Help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all of his wiles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We trust the Lord in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and wholesome that we should at all times and in every place give you thanks and praise, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. You have taken common elements such as dirt and clay and molded us in your image. Although we lost that image in the fall and the sin, you never stopped loving us, sending Jesus into this world to die for our sins and rise again to ransom us to you and to be your own people. We gather here in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, and we ask that you would forgive our sins and renew us in the gift that Jesus offers us in his true body and blood. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we stand before your altar here and offer you the praise that belongs only to you as we sing.
You sent your Son into this world to sacrifice his life for us and to rise from the dead to give us life and salvation. As we gather around this altar, as Jesus has commanded us, we give you thanks that in this bread and wine are the true body and blood of Jesus, given and shed for us to forgive our sins and restore us to God. With joy and gratitude in our hearts, we lift up your name, praising you now and for all eternity. Heavenly Father, we lift your praises in the name of Jesus, with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the, to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we go with the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn number 922, Go My Children with My Blessing.
attendant uh, for that. Uh, and also next Sunday, I will not be here. Uh, Pastor Kirk will be uh, back here guest preaching as we will be down uh, in Arkansas for a few days celebrating uh, Krista's grandma's 90th birthday. We've got people coming from Oklahoma, Texas, and Missouri, and so where do you meet? Arkansas. That's what you do for that. Uh, so that's where we'll be. Um, and also we've, uh, continuing on until Father's Day, yep, thank you Wayne, we got the baby bottle campaign going on, so please pick up a baby bottle to fill with uh, cash, coins, checks, stock certificates, something in support of the Center for Life, uh, all of it to support with a good cause as we uh, promote life here in St. Genevieve and Peary counties. Are there any other announcements this day? All right, we'll go in peace and serve the Lord. Yeah.